I've taken 25 of the best wonder kids in the world and moved them to non-league club Dulwich Hamlet in England's sixth tier. I've locked them there for 15 seasons and that should be enough time for them to get to the Premier League and maybe even the Champions League. So I am expecting these Wonder Kids to take Dulwich Hamlet to new heights. But I have a sneaky suspicion it's not going to be a smooth ride for every single player. Across these 15 seasons, I predict a few of them won't even play 15 games. At the very end of the 15 seasons, all 25 of the Wonder Kids get transferred to PSG for £25 million each, netting Dulwich Hamlet a cool £625 million. The big question is how are these players going to develop? Here you can see their current and potential ability. The players I've selected are 19 years old at the most and have some of the highest potential abilities in the game. However, as these players are so young, Football Manager randomizes their potential ability to be within two set numbers. But we have been pretty lucky with their randomizations and the potential abilities are pretty high. Some players are close to their potential ability, such as Jude Bellingham, and others have got quite a long way to go, such as Emre Tezgel. So whilst Jude Bellingham might be okay, players like Emre Tezgel might not reach their potential ability, playing way below what they currently should be playing at and at some of the worst training facilities in the game. There are two key things to note about this experiment. And the first is I've given every single one of these Wonder Kids a second nationality of English. That's because I did this experiment previously, I didn't give them second nationalities of English, and they all ran into work permit issues apart from the English players and just didn't play football. It was really frustrating. I've also added a transfer embargo to Dulwich Hamlet to ensure they can't sign any players. Because again, I did a second experiment with this, didn't put a transfer embargo in place, and Dulwich Hamlet just signed players to play instead of the Wonder Kids, which is not what this experiment is all about. So instead, we've got a transfer embargo in place to ensure our Wonder Kids are the only people playing for Dulwich. There is the chance of a mega regen coming through the youth intakes, but given how poor the facilities are at Dulwich Hamlet, I doubt we're going to see many good regens come through. So let's see how they get on in season one. My prediction is Dulwich Hamlet will have won the league, winning every single game along the way. And if that prediction is correct, you guys have to subscribe to the channel. So, let's find out as they win the league, not winning every single game. Please still subscribe. I, I, I need the numbers. They do dominate the league, but they picked up two draws to Ebsfleet and Bath away from home. Ansu Fati, Jamal Musiala and Pedri pick up the top scoring awards. Pedri picked up the best average rating and the most assists in the league. If we look at their best 11 from across the season, you can see they played a 4-3-3 for the most part with Fati, Musiala and Harvey Elliott in attack. Camavinga, Pedri and Jude Bellingham in the midfield with Udogi, Scalvini, Silva and Liveramento in the back line in front of Gabriel Slaninia, the keeper. Looks like Gavi also made 41 appearances across the season. Marcos Leonardo also made 38 but only got 15 goals but I imagine for Gavi most of these are substitute appearances. Yeah 28 substitute appearances for Gavi and I assume the same with Marcos Leonardo 21 substitute appearances. But if we sort this by appearances you can see that goalkeeper Nathaniel Nwosu hasn't made a single appearance in the league this season or at all in, in general just hasn't played a single game for Dulwich Hamlet in a competitive sense. Okay if he's not getting game time now, he's not going to get game time ever. He might be one of the players that doesn't play 15 games across this entire experiment. I'm also surprised that Patrick Lanza, the left back, only made three appearances across the season. He's not a bad left back, to be fair, but clearly they don't want him playing. Florian Wirtz only got three starts, actually, made 37 substitute appearances. I suspect he might get a few more games later on down the line, but players like Zina Dabast, uh, four starts, four substitute appearances, he might be in trouble too. So I suspect that Dulwich Hamlet will win the title in every single division they go to. So we're going to jump to season five, which should be the season they have in the championship, where hopefully we're going to see them promoted to the Premier League. And Dulwich Hamlet have been promoted to the Premier League, but only in second place behind Leeds United. Quite a competitive championship season with Leeds, Bournemouth, Everton, Stoke, Nottingham Forest all around the playoff places and the promotion places. So a really tough season there, but Dulwich had enough about them to get themselves promoted. Although, despite Musiala being the highest average rating player across the season and Pedri second in assists, none of their players were in the top goal scorers. So looking at this graph, after their win of the National League South in Season 1, they won the National League, they then won League 2, and then they won League One. So they've had back to back to back to back to back promotions. They've also picked up a FA trophy along the way, but only in 2023. So they must have lost one of these finals. Yes, they won it in season one, but in season two, they lost the final to Boreham Woods. 
It's quite embarrassing, really. But let's have a look at the players. A few of them are having a tough time. Nathaniel Nwosu still not making any appearances, but Emre Tezgel, the striker, only one substitute appearance. Endrick, who's got the highest potential ability range in Football Manager 2023, only made three substitute appearances. Warren, Zaire, Emery, he only made five substitute appearances. Zina Dabast, only 13. Mariba didn't even start a game, but he made 35 substitute appearances. It's not looking good for some of these players. Makoku, only one start. A lot of these guys are not performing. If we switch to my experiment view, but keep it in the appearance order, you can see that the players who have got no appearances have really low current abilities to the players at the other end of the spectrum with really high current abilities. You'll also notice it's the younger players who aren't playing games, and this will be because right at the start of the experiment, those younger players, despite having great potentials, had a lot lower current abilities than the players a bit older than them, such as Jude Bellingham. As a result, they weren't getting played because they were rubbish at the time compared to other players, and they've just not been able to develop. Which means, despite them having insane potential abilities, some of the best in the game, they're just not being used. I mean, at 20 years old, okay, Endrick can still turn it around. He can still play a lot of games down the line for, for, for Dulwich Hamlet and still improve quite significantly. But Jude Bellingham has just not improved. His current ability is still 155, which is what it was right at the start. Which means the train facilities aren't working for him, and... Whatever he's doing on the pitch, it's still at a, a low level for him that he's not improving. It'll be interesting to see how he improves in the Premier League. Actually, most of the players are nowhere near their potential abilities. And it just shows that playing lower down for so long has really hindered their development. Hopefully in the Premier League, we're going to see these guys actually start to improve their current ability. So let's do that. Let's jump another five years in the future, see if they're still in the Premier League and see if they actually are improving. Oh my word, they're not just in the Premier League. They are, they're third. They've come third in the Premier League. They've got Champions League football. This is mental. I mean, okay, they're a long way off Newcastle and Man City for the top two spots, but they're, they're still doing well. And now we can see some of these players have developed a little bit. Jude Bellingham's gone from 155 to 169. Gabby's up to 173. Camavinga up to 168. Musiala's gone up 10 to 165. So, okay, a few of them are improving. Uh, Destiny Udogi, he was like 145. He's now 166, which is pretty good going. But they've still not played Endrick much, and he is nowhere near his potential ability, neither is Warren Zare, Emery, uh, Pedri's right up there, but Makoku nowhere near it, Mariba not really anywhere near it either, which is a little bit surprising. And looking at the selection info, well this past season, Dennis Seaman, Nathaniel Nwosu and Emre Testula failed to make a single appearance. This Gary Gallagher guy is a regent of Dulwich Hamlet, obviously good enough for the first team apparently. And there was actually a whole bunch of players that didn't even make a single first team start. Lots of substitute appearances but didn't even start. It just Florian Wirtz. He's one of the best young players in the game. He just can't get game time. So how have Dulwich done in the Premier League? Well in season one they came 16th and followed that up with 11th place finish but then slowly dropped down the next two seasons coming 11th again and 12th the season afterwards. But then this season have come third. Sadly looking across the top at the honours here no FA Cup or League Cup or anything like that. And interestingly they are are sharing a stadium with Millwall right now, which is uh, an odd one. On the club facility information, it doesn't say anything about having their own stadium built or redeveloped, but they do have their own stadium. As you can see, they moved into the Dulwich Hamlet Stadium, but it's only 8,000 seats. And I think for the Premier League, it's either 10,000 or 12,500 seats that you need. Now they've got the expansion capacity there, but they're just not expanding the stadium. But there is something weirder about this. Now, I said to you earlier that I've actually simulated this through three times, including this one. And every single time, they just move around to different stadiums without expanding their own stadium, which is really bizarre. Uh, I've seen them move to Fulham Stadium and to Brentford Stadium as well. This time, it's Millwall. But now let's jump to season 15 and find out how many games these Wonder Kids played for Dulwich Hamlet and how far they could take them. So here we are in 2037 with Dulwich Hamlet. Uh, what is interesting to note is they have got almost perfect training and youth facilities, which is really good for them. They've put a lot of money and time into that, although they haven't put money into their own stadium because they're still playing at Millwalls. They've just come sixth in the Premier League, securing Europa League football for next season. Uh, looking on this past winner's tab here, uh, they've not won it, so third might have been their highest finish. In fact, third was their highest finish. The season afterwards, they dropped down to seventh, 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 
and then 11th, but this season 6th. As you can see, they've not won a single European trophy, which is a bit upsetting because in a different simulation list that I did where actually they signed a ton of other players, they won the Europa Conference League, but of course that wasn't really our wonder kids doing it, it was other players. Let's have a look at the managers first of all. Now I accidentally made myself the manager right at the start. So Paul Barnes was their first manager where he won the National League South and the FA Trophy, then left the role after a year and three days. For 12 years, almost 13 years, Tony Mowbray was the manager and he took them all the way to the Premier League but he retired from management and then Arteta took over for 117 days before being sacked. He, uh, he played 13 games and lost eight of them, winning five. So not a great run for him. He was sacked and since then, they've had Marco Rose in charge, who's done a bit better with 16 wins and five losses. I'm a big fan of Mikel Arteta's manager history. He's gone from Arsenal to Spain to Porto to PSG, to Dulwich Hamlet. Tony Mowbray though did take quite a big drop. He left Sunderland to join Dulwich Hamlet. That seems really bizarre, but obviously had a great time at Dulwich Hamlet. And Paul Barnes, the first manager, left Dulwich Hamlet to manage Notts County, Stockport, Bath and Aldershot. Did he not know what was gonna happen to him? All he had to do is put the right players in the right position that they'd win every single game pretty much. He could have had a straight shot to the Premier League, but no. he. He chose Notts County. Now, a few of these players did develop a little bit more as well. As you can see, Gabby hit his potential ability just about. Bellingham wasn't far off. Uh, Camavinga was a little bit below, as was Musiala. Pedri almost hit his. Uh, Destiny Udogi almost hit his. Selenia did hit his, as did David Coppola as well. So by the time they got to the Premier League and did develop a little bit more, these players were pretty much playing at their potential ability, which is why they did so well in the Premier League. If we have a look at the overall best 11 across the 15 seasons they mostly played a 4-2-3-1 with Ansu Fati being their star striker throughout all of this. Harvey Elliott, Pedri and Musiala played across the attacking midfield with Bellingham and Gavi in the CDM spots. Udogi, Scalvini, Coppola and Livramento in the back line with Slinia the main goalkeeper and racking up 711 appearances for the club. But that wasn't the most. Pedri racked up 744 appearances scoring 242 goals for Dulwich Hamlet. What is really interesting is rotation does not seem to be a big part of this squad. You can see the starting 11, none of them have less than 500 appearances. And if you take away uh, Harvey Elliott and Coppola, none of them have under 600 appearances, which is wild. It's when you get to the bench that you see, I mean, Camavinga has got 630, maybe unlucky not to be in that starting lineup. Marcus Leonardo's got 532, maybe lucky not to in the starting lineup, although as a striker, he's still behind Ansu Fati. But the other ones don't have many appearances in comparison, particularly the backup keeper, Dennis Seaman, with just 58, which makes me think, what's Nathaniel Nwosu done? Oh, bless him. Two appearances in 15 years. It's a real shame, that. Both of them came in the National League, so he's not played a game in 14 years. Oh, and of course, because he was like 16 years old right at the start, um, and he'd had a contract for 15 years, he's been locked into a youth team contract. So he's, on, he's been on five pound a week, bless him. That That is breaking the law. I think we need to get HMRC and the, the coppers into Dulwich Hamlet because there's some dodgy goings on here. Emery Tezgel only made 16 appearances for Dulwich Hamlet uh, and, most, and most of them came in the last two seasons. He made five appearances in the Premier League last season and he got his one goal of his entire career in the 33-34 season. Now, interestingly, uh, Patrick Lanza, his current ability has dropped off massively. He's only 89 out of 150 that he could be, but he still ended up making 66 appearances for the club. And Zina Dabast, he's only 96 out of 151, but he ended up making 178 appearances for the club. 25 this season alone, despite him being not very good. Perhaps that's maybe because we've got more players weighted towards the attacking areas of the pitch so players like Tezjo just weren't going to get in in a one striker system but they had to use more defenders like Debast and Patrick Lanza when they had injuries and suspensions. Endrick went on to make 213 appearances for the club but never really did much and again he's another player that's almost slave labour on five pounds a week. Oh, I'm just looking through their competition history as well and they were runners up in the Europa League in 2034. Who did they lose the final to? They lost it to Real Sociedad. It's a tough one to take. Also, Leeds held the final in the most recent season, but it's the David Beckham Arena, but no teams play in it. It was built in 2024 with 40,000 seats, but no teams play in it. Leeds United, if I can find them, play in Ellen Road. 
Googling the David Beckham Arena Leeds, it's not like it's a real life thing that's happening. New Stadium Leeds just comes up with expansions for Ellen Road. Leeds have got no information in their facilities history. So where this, who, who built this stadium and why? What's it doing in the game? Well, looking past the bizarre stadium stuff, Dulwich Hamlet have done pretty well and these Wonder Kids have done really well. But it's interesting to see that they had a core group of 11 players or so that played virtually every single game and everyone else was sort of left to the wayside. If you want to see another video of mine, I recently put the perfect manager in charge of bottom of the National League Scunthorpe United and the worst manager possible in charge of Arsenal top of the Premier League and then we simulate into the future to find out what would happen. That is on screen right now.